Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at 7 things that I should pay attention to if I play online games because they can help me to play those games as smoothly as possible and uh, obviously this video is going to be from the networking point of view and the assumption is uh, my gaming device, for example if it is my PC, it is already powerful enough to play those games. I already talked about the things that I should uh, keep in mind to have a better home network in general in another video link there also in the video description in case you want to check it out but in this video as I said we're going to be only focusing on gaming and what I should do to prevent any problems when I actually play those games so let's begin I need to make sure my internet is fast enough for playing online games. Usually each internet service requires a minimum internet speed in order to run smoothly without any problems. In fact, in one of my videos, uh, which you might remember if you follow the channel, I tried to calculate how much of internet bandwidth I really need for my house based on my internet usage. And I somehow came up with my own method. In that video, as part of the calculation, I used different internet services one by one to find out how much of my internet bandwidth each of them actually used. So when I played some online games on my PS4, that number didn't go any higher than 2.7 megabits per second for download. And a simple Google search also verifies that number. However, that is only for playing games, and if I need to download those games too, then I'd better have a faster connection. Because most of the games these days are huge, for example the GTA 5 for PS4 is around 45 gigabytes, and if I want to download it with a 3 megabits per second internet, it's gonna take me around 33 hours. So in that video, again, as part of the calculation, I added a number between 10 to 50 megabits per second to the previous number for each person who is using the network to calculate the final internet speed that I need. So, for example, for a gamer who usually plays the physical copies of the games rather than the digital copies, a minimum internet speed of 15 megabits per second should be enough. However, if that gamer usually plays and downloads the digital copies of the games, then a download speed of 25 megabits per second and faster is better. And if there are multiple gamers or multiple internet users in the same network, I would take them into account as well and pretty much follow the same method I used in that video to calculate the internet speed that I need for the whole network. Now, as far as the upload speed, uh, when I played some online games, I barely used anything higher than 0.5 megabits per second. So, as it is also suggested here, I should be fine with a 1 megabits per second upload speed. However, if I also want to stream my games maybe on the Twitch, then I'd better have a faster upload speed. But how much faster? That will depend on a few things such as the resolution and the frame rate that I want to choose. Twitch actually has a useful guide on that subject, link in the video description and definitely check it out if interested. So far we talked about speed, uh, which is essentially how much data that can be downloaded or uploaded at a given time. 100 megabits per second, 10 megabits per second, and so on and so forth. But another thing which is also very important is latency, which is how long is it taking for the data to travel from my device? Let's say it's a PS4 or PS5, depending on when you are watching this video, to the destination, which is a game server, and all the way back to my device. It is measured in milliseconds and it is recommended to be 100 milliseconds or less for gaming. And I would say it is even better to aim for less than 50 milliseconds for optimum gaming. The lower the better. Because if it is too high, that's when I experience lag and delay in my games. For example, in a first person shooter, I'm aiming at a target and I pull the trigger, I mean I press the button, but by the time this message goes all the way to the game server, that target has slightly moved and I cannot hit it. So I should check the latency to make sure it is not too high. But if it is, then it should be troubleshot. If I ping the IP address of the wireless router, then I can see the latency of my own network. If it is too high, then I would know the issue is somewhere on my own network and I can troubleshoot that. But if I want to check the latency all the way to the game server, then I should ping the IP address of the server. If for whatever reason there is packet loss when I'm communicating with the game server, 
the result is going to be more or less similar to having a very high latency which is bad usually one of the places that this packet loss might happen is actually on my own wi-fi because wireless networks are unpredictable maybe all of a sudden there is an interference happening on the wireless channel that i use which can result in packet loss now as you can see i'm pinging the wireless router again and i'm losing some of the packets this tells me the problem is again on my own network and most likely on the wi-fi which actually brings us to the next point I would always prefer a wired connection over a wireless connection for gaming. I mean, we already talked about how unpredictable Wi-Fi's could be. But also a wireless network is half duplex. It is a shared medium too. So even though the advertised uh, speed might be really good, for example, let's say 1300 megabits per second, that's only theoretical and in real life it is much less than that. It is also shared between whoever is actually connected to that wireless network at that time, which is going to make it even worse. A wired connection on the other hand is full duplex and it is dedicated between those two devices and makes it much more reliable for gaming. If a wired connection is not possible and I have to use wireless, then I'll make sure A, I'm using the best frequency band to connect to the network. Usually the 5 gigahertz is better than 2.4 gigahertz, but depending on the environment, it could be the opposite. So I will need to check that first. After choosing the best frequency, I will also make sure I'm using the least crowded channel of that frequency to avoid any interference with other Wi-Fi's nearby. I will also try to stay as close as I can to the wireless router to make sure the signal is strong. And if I cannot stay very close to the wireless router and probably have to use a repeater, then I'll make sure that repeater is at least dual band and not single band. And if you're wondering why, definitely check out that video where I install and test a single band wireless repeater. Another thing that I would definitely use is the quality of service. By using the QoS, I can set up the wireless router to prioritize the gaming traffic over any other kinds of internet traffic. This way the wireless router would deal with the gaming traffic like VIP to make sure it gets all the necessary resources before any other kinds of internet traffic. For example, if somebody is uh, downloading a huge file and another person is uh, streaming a 4K video, the wireless router would make sure the gaming traffic always comes first. Last but not least, I would make sure my networking equipment is reliable, powerful, and equipped with necessary features that might come in handy. For example, if I have a wireless router which is too old, uh, it might not have proper processing power, memory, a wireless technology, and even some useful features such as the quality of service. And that might result in uh, slow connections, high latency, and even packet loss, which all of that is bad for gaming. And that's why the wireless router manufacturers usually have some wireless routers specifically built for gaming, because they check all those boxes. And I link some of them in the video description in case you want to check them out. Alright, that was pretty much it and I hope you liked it. Hit that like button if you did, share it if you think others might like it too, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, comment below if you have any questions, suggestions, or maybe if you just feel like talking, say hi and I'll say hi. And check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel and contribute to make it better. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.